Hello, and welcome to another edition of Somerville Neighborhood News Community Lens. I am happy to be joined in the studio with uh, some people from the Somerville Homeless Coalition to talk about their annual race. And with me in the studio today is Peg Drisco. Welcome to you, Peg. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Nice, nice to have you. And uh, Matthew Cawley. Thanks for having me. Welcome to you. Thank you very much. So there are some changes to the race, which uh, has a long kind of storied tradition in Somerville. We were just talking beforehand, and you mentioned that it's been going on for 24 years. This is the 24th annual Somerville 5K. So, and it's a, it's a really important fundraiser for you all at the it Somerville is. Homeless Coalition. Um, Peg, do you want to talk about um, a, a major change that's sure. occurring with this year's race? So this year we're calling it the Somerville 5K Detour Road Race because we're detouring it to Arlington. Um, part of the, the uh, difficulty with having it in Davis where we typically have it is, is that the detours um, have made it really difficult to run our original course in Davis. So we looked at several options and decided that it made the most sense for us to go to Arlington for the year. So we tried to have fun with it, you know, the detour road race. And I think people, um, you know, they kind of like the idea, change it up, different course. Um, so it's been fun to, to kind of play with the concept since it's been such a tried and true thing for so long. And in general, has the feedback been good? Yes, I think that? so. I'm, most people were, you know, of course they're disappointed that it's not the way it's always been because people love their, their traditions. Yeah. But in this case, there wasn't much we could do about it. And it also, you know, we were fortunate that Arlington said, sure, come on. And we serve people not just in Somerville. We are kind of the greater Somerville Homeless Coalition. Mm -hmm. We serve people in Somerville, Arlington, Medford, Everett. So, um, you know, it's not just Somerville. So it is, it's important to kind of spread it out a little bit too um, and try to, uh, to attract some new um, sponsors and supporters. And uh, Matthew, um, I mentioned that this is uh, a very large, uh, important fundraiser on your calendar year. Um, do you want to talk some more about that? As Peg mentioned, this is our second largest fundraiser of the year behind our annual gala. Um, traditionally, particularly when it's in Davis Square, we tend to get between 700 and 1,000 runners, which is huge, and then obviously all of the sponsors. And I think historically over the years it has been built up by a great team of volunteers really who serve on the committee of the road race to a point where it raised on a, usually around a 90,000 mark. Um, so we're really hoping that we can get close to that this year, obviously with all of the changes, not only the, the location and the, and the route, but actually the day has changed too, to Sunday the 6th, it's usually on the Saturday. Um, and I think that will have an impact, but we're really doing things like this and put, putting ourselves out there to promote the changes and, and hopefully we can draw the same amount of people, or if not close to it, and, and really get as close to that 90,000 as possible. Right. You know, and our needs continue to grow, um, you know, we have more people utilizing our food pantry. We were talking about that earlier. Um, so we, we need the support and we need the community to stand behind us and say, you know, we'd love to participate in your race and, um, and raise money from our own networks, you know, to get somebody to sponsor me to run the race or however you want to do that to, um, to make sure that we raise the, uh, the amount of money that we need to, um, to keep our operation working for people. And so the money does go to directly to operations? It does. It goes to our um, guests and clients around the, their needs. Um, some of it will probably go to the food pantry, which is in East Somerville at 165 Broadway. It's called Project Soup. Um, there are a number of, of ways that we use it, case management, rapid rehousing, um, outreach, shelter services. So Very we provide all of services. those things. Yes, yeah. And they're all really basic services that people need. Um, so, yeah. Now, going back to the race, are there um, a large amount of people that do race as a group? Um, or do you see more individual racers? So, the, I mean, the, the largest proportion of it is individuals who mm -hmm. sign up. Um, a lot of people just like like either like the Somerville Homeless Coalition and like, like what we do and want to support it in that way because they like to run. 
we do get some people that are are what people would call runners who go to multiple races all over the place and they right. like they like because it's in davis and we have a fun brunch at the end usually where people get to hang out they get some breakfast food and we have some music and then they can scatter off into the pubs and the bars and the restaurants in and around davis um and but we do have we do see a small amount of teams who want to get together particularly churches church groups and stuff who want it to be uh, very centered around their community mm -hmm. um so we do some sort of fun prizes for like the largest team um and the fastest team to help people like be involved without needing to necessarily fundraise right. but um but we do this year particularly because of all the changes we are trying to encourage teams to do a bit more peer peer to peer fundraising and help us reach that goal and enrollment uh, uh goes all the way till the race day it goes until the night before so regist online registration registration closes the night before okay and then people can register day of so they can show up on the day of the race register and run but to make your lives easier everybody should enroll beforehand yes yeah. i mean that is a and plus, if you're one of the first 500 registrants, you get a free T-shirt. Oh, great. So that might be, um, you know, an kind of inspirational thing for people like, oh, I want my T-shirt. So, um, so that's kind of a nice perk. Very nice. And uh, is, do you have an expected enrollment or...? or um... I know I would love to see us get, you know, up to 700 people in Arlington. I'm hopeful that people will come back and do the race even though it's changed this year, you know, it's been detoured, yeah. but we really would like to see people come back. And I know it's different, but I think it's going to be just as fun. Mm. And uh, we will be having food afterwards, um, so people will be able to avail themselves of that as well. Very nice. So get together with the community, socialize, right. and come have together for a really good cause. Yep. And and actually, it's it's open to all age groups. So oh, we're, cool. we're hope we're we always try and encourage. Families or parents to run with their kids and bring and bring other younger people along, so it's more of a, a family oriented um, event, so that people can come and spend time as a family and enjoy brunch together after right. they've had their exercise for their weekend. Uh, <laughs> so and you don't have to run. I mean, you know, walkers are welcome mm. for sure. So I mean, it's not like a hyper competitive. No, event. no, it's not. I mean, I mean, there are people who run for their time and I'm sure, yeah. all that, but. Uh, most people, I think, run for fun, mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of the folks that come, they walk, and that's great too. We love that. Very cool. So, yeah. So um, why don't we uh, wrap up talking about some of your other initiatives? I know you mentioned uh, the food pantry. Sure. Um, and how important that's going to be in the upcoming uh, colder months. Yes. You know, when the heat goes on, people have to turn their heat on. Um, they tend to have to cut other areas of their budget mm -hmm. if they're struggling. And so our, the need in our food pantry will go up. It's already up 65% from last year. We have many more people using our food pantry. It's incredibly busy. Um, and so what I think it's important, what is important to understand is that, you know, we can always use everybody's help. So if you have a Girl Scout troop or a um, church group or a neighborhood group that wants to do a food drive, we would be very grateful to have that, to have the, the proceeds from that, to have the, the food from that. Um, and some of the items that we really like are mostly like protein items are great. Laundry soap is a really tough one to get. So we love laundry soap um, and full size bottles of toiletries. Um, what else? The usual spaghetti sauce, pasta. Yeah. Um, those types of things. Shelf stable. But, yeah, yeah, some shelf, yeah, shelf stable stuff. We do get like protein and dairy and eggs from the food bank. Mm -hmm. So we have that kind of stuff pretty much covered. It's the extra stuff that they may not get on a regular basis mm -hmm. that people helps pe make people's lives easier too. You come home from, from your third job and you, you know, want to make your kids dinner. So there's a thing of pasta and some nice sauce and, um, and, and, uh, and so it's a nice way to just, you know, be able to make people's lives a little bit easier. So if groups or individuals want to donate to the food pantry, they should get in touch with you through your website? Yes, they can reach out um, to our 617-623-6111 number, and you can call and ask, or you can just go on the website and it gives um, some examples of mm -hmm. food that we really appreciate, and um, we appreciate everything. So, um, but there are some things that we need more than other things, mm -hmm. so. And I think one other initiative that we've been really working hard on the last couple of months, um, when clients of ours transitioned from shelter into more permanent housing, 
that we do um, wish lists on um, Target or Amazon to help them make, yeah. make a home of their mm. new, their new space. That's right. so great. So if any so if anybody is interested in that kind of work, always check our Facebook or our website because we always throw the link up and ask our community to come together to help them out. So the program is called Make a House a Home, mm -hmm. and we've done it in a number of ways. You know, one way uh, Matthew went out to a temple, and they did kind of a like a shower almost for the person going into housing, and I we've done that with others as well and then we've also done the, the registry lists online which is nice because the person feels really connected to it because they choose their own things you know we had a one mom with two kids and and she finally moved into housing and her kids got to choose their own bedding oh that's so and great. that means a lot yeah. you know because when it when it's something that you choose it's your home mm. and it helps people stay housed it really does that's that's so great and uh, we encourage everybody to uh, get out there and support the Somerville Coalition um, either by participating raising money um, during the Somerville 5k detour version this year <laughs> uh, or by just going to the website and seeing how you can help out um, Matthew Pegg thank you for being in the studio Thanks, with Dave. me today thank you, Dave. and uh, yeah we look forward to seeing you at the race yes it's gonna be a good one all right thanks, thanks.